I mean, so, John, yeah. so you came down to Thorrock today. What made you come down to Thorrock all, of all places? Why did you choose Thorrock today? OK, Jeremy Corbyn was launched again after the general election mm -hmm. campaign. We think there could be a general election at any time. Um, we're working on the base that could come within months. It could come within a couple of years. So we've launched that campaign. We're on the general election footing. Jeremy's put the whole party on that, really. Thorrock's a target seat, obviously. It's a, uh, one of our closest marginals. So we're going to win it next time on the basis of hard work getting our message across. Mm -hmm. The key issue now is that Jeremy and I and all the Shadow Cabinet members are touring around the country, bringing party members and supporters together, talk about the policies we're still advocating, but then also talking about how we can update our manifesto when the next election comes. So it's a really uh, thorough and concise but engagement process. Mm -hmm. Thorough is going to be one of our main target seats. So what we'll be doing is, yes, you'll see lots of Shadow Cabinet members coming down here, You'll see us recruiting and recruiting party members, mm -hmm. and the organisation on the ground is terrific anyway, but we'll be building upon that, because we've got to convince people next time round and get that vote out, which we will. Yeah, and of course before 2010 it was it was a yeah. Labour seat, and, yeah. and yeah. you know, year on year, you yeah. know, a very tight free elections yeah. running, uh, well, so it, it's been a target seat for elections running, but we'll, haven't we'll, quite We'll get it, it back, but we'll get it back on the basis of hard work on the ground. Yeah, I, I was going to say, what do you think the reason is why on those three occasions you've come so close but not quite got over well, the line? Well, you know, it's interesting really. I think in some ways this latest campaign has taught us a real lesson. One is listening to people a lot more. Developing a manifesto that relates to people's real issues that they're confronting and then giving people confidence that Labour going into government can tackle those problems. And I think we've come really close to that. Mm -hmm. but in an election campaign, we get reasonably balanced coverage in terms of broadcast media in particular. I think if we'd have had a bit more time of the general election campaign, even another week, I think we most probably would have won this seat and we'd be in mm -hmm. government now next time round. I think the reason we'll win it is because we've not stopped campaigning. We're going to have month after month, a month, and if necessary, if it takes years, we'll do it. Of campaigning on at this level. Yeah, and I mean, I thought it would have been a major target seat, I guess, in 2017. Mm -hmm. What's the reason why you or Jeremy Corbyn didn't come down to Thorough and campaign in Thorough? Largely stretched resources. Stretched resources. Jeremy toured all around the country as much as he possibly could. The yeah. same with me. That's why I'm down here now, because I want to make sure that in the, as we post-election campaign, as we're now re relaunched in many ways in terms of how we're campaigning, I wanted Thorot to be one of the first places I came to. Yeah. So, I mean, is it a bit too little to, you know... No, not really. If it was a target seat, you know, n yeah. not many votes you've always got last that, time. You've always got that situation. Every constituency, no matter how many targets we've got, every constituency wants the leader there, and, and Jeremy will be down here in due course. Mm -hmm. I felt as though I should come down because uh, we're on the mobilisation of seats like this, a lot of the issues that are being faced are economic issues, you know, mm -hmm. jobs, living standards, decent pay, that sort of thing. Yeah, and of course, I mean, uh, Thorough in particular had a massive UKIP vote, yeah. and that's kind of collapsed now, and it might keep collapsing. So, mm -hmm. what are you going to do to appeal to? You know, you can appeal to the the Labour support you talk really well out there, but yeah. what are you going to do to well, it's interesting. appeal to them? A lot of people were predicting if the UKIP vote collapsed, it would go all to the Tories. We don't we notice actually that isn't the case. Significant parts of the UKIP vote to come to us, and I think that's because we're dealing with the bread and butter issues, mm -hmm. so housing decent education, decent health service, proper wages, a real living wage, making sure that we give people the quality of life that they want. Mm -hmm. So I think in this campaign, in the run up to the general election, mm -hmm. those bread and butter issues were the issues that pulled UK voters across. Mm -hmm. We'll continue to campaign on those, but also you know, it's about listening to people as well, and that's what we do. Yeah, and of course Labour did campaign you know, to leave the EU yeah. in the end, yeah. but a lot of people in Thorot, you know, one of the highest votes to leave yeah. the EU, so I mean, a lot of people might still have it in their minds, you know, Labour, they don't associate it with a, a well, party we, that really wants to leave the EU, how are you going to attract well, them? Well, we, we campaigned as a party in their friend to remain. Yeah, yeah. but a lot our of people that might... Our campaign was to re remain and reform, but we lost the, we lost that referendum on that basis. Mm -hmm. And we've, you know, we've got to respect the result, and that's what we've done. And we've said all the way through that we'll respect the result. That's why we voted for Article 50 in Parliament, even though we were criticised by some of the media mm -hmm. and other commentators. What we're trying to do now is say, OK, we respect the referendum, but we're going to get the best deal for areas like Thurrock. That means priority is jobs and the economy. What we can't do is allow the government now to uh, negotiate a deal that impacts upon our economy in a way that people start losing their jobs or have their wages undercut. I think a lot of people in Thurrock, though, they want a, a, a good deal and they want you know, a, 
they don't want a party just to obstruct. Um, yeah, I don't want to go through just for the sake no, of... No, that isn't happening. Because that isn't it's the Tories. Happen. That's why well, we vote for Article 50 to enable the negotiations to take place. We've said to government time and time again, they said, well, we're, not, we're not about obstruction, we're about getting the best deal. The problem that we've got at the moment is one, we don't know who we're negotiating with when it comes to the government, because different voices are being heard, they're in disarray, that's the first thing. We don't know what their objectives are. And secondly, they're threatening to walk away with no deal, and that would be the worst possible option for us. Mm -hmm. And the outcome would be it would impact upon jobs and our economy. So we're working, interestingly enough, we're working with European colleagues to try and ensure that we get the best deal. The way that we do that is negotiate on the basis of mutual interest and mutual respect. You do not start threatening that you're going to set up a tax haven on the, off the continent of Europe or anything like that. And I think in that way they've undermined their ability to negotiate a decent deal in the interest of our country. Mm -hmm. And, and that John Kent touched on it as well. Yeah. Um, the Thames Crossing. Yeah. So I don't know how much you're aware of the Thames Crossing issue, but yeah. what would be Labour's position if there listening was to, to be people, another? Listening to local people. Okay, so, but if, if there was to be another election and say Labour yeah. did get into power, John Kent said that um, in, when he was campaigning that the, the Labour Party would reassess the, yeah, the decision. What, so w w would well, you stand what, by that? That's well, what would happen. We're listening to local people on all these infrastructure projects that have that been promoted by the government. We said we will listen to local people. And someone like John Kent is the ideal voice of local people, knows what the concerns are, and we'll listen to him. Yeah, and say there isn't another election, are you, is the Labour Party going to put pressure on the government now around the Thames crossing and the we're, decision that's been made? On all those issues, we're going to listen to local people and reassess. Of course we are. So, so are, are you going to bring it up in, in say, Parliament well, now? It, it is, our transport spokespeople are already looking at all the infrastructure projects right the way across the country, including this one, and they'll be challenging the government on everything, both in terms of feasibility and cost and its impact. So, yeah. But, remember, we're a democratic party. We'll be coming back to this constituency and listening to people and listening to the views of John Kent and others, and that will be reflected in the voices that we have in Parliament. Okay.